day friends greetings to you in Jesus name the title of the message is keys of the kingdom of God and I want to place this message on the word of God taken from Matthew's gospel 16 chapter 19th verse Jesus spoke to Peter and said I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be what has already been bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be already loosed in heaven when did this conversation begin how did it begin Peter was a fisherman who was fishing in Galilee, in Sea of Galilee. Jesus was preaching there at the shores of Galilee. And the people are thronging around him. He wanted to go in the boat of uh, Peter and preach. So he said, just push the boat a little into the water. So Jesus sat over the boat and he preached God's word. Peter was actually toiling all over night to catch fish. He couldn't catch any fish. So he's washing the nets. So Jesus said, launch out into the deep and cast your net for a drought. And what happened was, he, he said, Lord, all night we toil, but because of your word, I will do it. So when they launched out into the deep and he cast his net, they were able to enclose a lot of fish. To that extent, the, um, the net was about to break. When Peter saw this miracle, he came and knelt at the feet of Jesus and said, I am a sinful man, depart from me, O Lord. But Jesus said, I will make you a fishers of men. Later, we see Peter leaving everything and following the Lord Jesus Christ. And as the disciples were following Jesus, Jesus asked them, Whom do you say that I am? So Peter said, You are the Son of God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed these things unto you, but my heavenly Father has revealed these things unto you. Jesus said, When Peter told this confession about Jesus Christ, that on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This rock means who was speaking about himself, the word of God unto which the church will be built. And then Jesus told Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The question is, did Peter receive the keys of the kingdom of heaven? How did he receive it? How did he use it? Is it possible for us to receive the keys of the kingdom of heaven? And these are the questions that I want to place before you. The blessings of the kingdom of God. We live in this world, our eyes are focused on the things of this world. So we believe when we gather a lot of goods and money and materials, ah, we will be happy. But it is not. This world is full of evil. Lot of difficulties are there. People with money also suffer. Struggles are there. Sorrows are there. Death are there. Death happens everywhere. Many feel that still money is all that matters. But when we look at the word of God, Jesus tells us something different. All that we need in this world, the material blessings, spiritual blessings, and eternal blessings when we die, all are in the kingdom of God. When he speaks about heavenly places, heavenly places, the meaning is something that is existing in heaven, things that take place in heaven, things that come from heaven, everything is from, from heaven. And if you look at Philippians 4, chapter 19, the verse, this St. Paul writes, But my God shall supply all you need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The world, Satan can give us a lot of materials. But here we see God promising his wealth from heavenly places. God shall supply all your need in heavenly places. So we need material blessings. And also Ephesians 1, 3, St. Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. You know, some people cannot pray. Some people do not know how to overcome their sinful passions. But here the, the word of God says that God has prepared all blessings, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. And also after death, what happens? We have to enter into eternal life. So in John's epistle, 1 John 2, 25, there he says, this is a promise that God has pr promised us even eternal life. And the eternal life is in Jesus Christ. So, so to come back to the blessings of the kingdom of God, material blessings, spiritual blessings, and also the eternal blessings are all in Christ in the heavenly places. When we have the keys of the kingdom of God, we can definitely open the doors of heaven and receive all these blessings. When we speak about keys, it speaks about power, speaks about privilege, authority, inheritance, control, and also responsibility and accountability. So when we receive the keys of the kingdom of God, we must understand these points. When we look at the scriptures, there are two bunches of keys are explained. One is, as we read in Revelation 1.18, Jesus said, I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. 
So Jesus has the keys of hell and death. Nobody can open or shut it without the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, he told Peter and also gave the disciples, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So when did Peter receive these, these keys of the kingdom of heaven? How did he use it? We have to understand. Now these keys of the kingdom of heaven, what are the keys? Bible doesn't say. But when we do some research in the Bible, we can understand what are the keys that can open the door of heaven. I want to place before you five keys. Key number one, the name of Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. So when Jesus Christ came into this world, he was ushering in the kingdom of God. So the name of Jesus is very important. Usually the name speaks about the person behind that name. The person who has been doing certain things behind that name. Jesus loved men. He gave himself for people, for salvation and also for a victorious living in this world, preparing them for eternal life. Jesus' name is name above every name. The name of Jesus is that saves. Name that gives eternal life. Name that gives power to become the sons of God. John said, if a person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall receive power to become the sons of God. And the name of Jesus, the disciples, the apostles performed miracles, signs and wonders. And when we go to God the Father in Jesus' name, helped by the Holy Spirit, God answers prayers. And demons, devils, Satan, they tremble before the name of Jesus. So the name of Jesus is, is a key to open the door of heaven. When Peter, when we were going in, uh, near the temple, there was a man who was lame. He was asking for some alms. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. This lame man was lame from his birth. He got up and he began to jump around and he began to walk. And the result was 5,000 people were added into the church. So Peter, who, who had nothing, he left everything to follow Jesus. He did not have silver and gold, but he had the name of Jesus. And in that holy name of Jesus, he was able to perform this miracle. We must understand the efficacy of the name of Jesus. Many people do not understand the power behind the name of Jesus. Never ever misuse the name of Jesus. I always revere the name of Jesus, love the name of Jesus. We should never desecrate the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is powerful. There was a man who was walking on the road and some of his enemies came and beat him up, pulled his tongue out. It seems that when a human's tongue is pulled out, it will be very long, I mean, hanging out. So he couldn't breathe, he was choking, and he tried to call upon his own um, gods and all. Later, suddenly he remembered the name of Jesus. He called the name of Jesus. Jesus came, took him, put the tongue inside, healed him. His whole body was full of wounds, healed him and said, go and hear my words. And there was a meeting going on in an evangelical um, church was conducting a meeting. He went and heard God's word. He was saved. Key number one, the name of Jesus. So we as believers should know the name of Jesus. And others who are listening to this message, if you have not yet become a believer, understand the name of Jesus can open the door of heaven. Key number two, prayer of faith. God lives in unapproachable light. We cannot see God. But when we pray to God the Father in Jesus' name, He answers our prayer. We must be able to reach out to Him in faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Word of God says, when we come to God, you must believe that He is there and is a rewarder of them who seek Him diligently. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives and he that seeks finds and to him that knocks it shall be opened. Now, how to pray? We must be able to pray with a heart of obedience, with a heart of cleanliness, a heart that is devoid of guilt. So many, many times, you know, when we do something wrong, our conscience becomes guilty. With that, when we pray, our faith becomes inoperable, ineffective. What is needed when we obey God's word, when we keep a clean conscience and pray, definitely God will answer the prayer. So the key number two is prayer in faith. So the word of God says, watch and pray. Matthew's Gospel, 26, chapter 40, the verse we read, watch and pray. We have to be watchful in our mind, in our body, and pray to God. Watch in prayer, Colossians 4, 2. When we pray, we must know to whom are we talking. Watch in prayer. And Ephesians 5, 18 says, pray and watch. 
So we have to watch and pray. Watch in prayer. After prayer, when we go out into the world, we'll have to be watchful, not to fall in sin, not to uh, stumble upon the things of this world. We must be able to have this faith and prayer. When we look to God in prayer, when we have faith and prayer, definitely God will answer. In the scriptures, we read about a woman who was having an issue of blood. Matthew's Gospel 9, 20, 22, if you read. And she has been going to the doctors. Doctors couldn't help. She did not even utter a word. She came and touched the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ with a finger of faith. And virtue proceeded from the Lord Jesus Christ and she was totally healed. Now my question that I place before you is, how many of you are having real prayer life? Maybe you have time for every other thing. Time to talk to your friends, time to sit before the television and uh, look at a lo lot of things that the world offers to you. You're so enamored by it, you're so happy about it. At the same time, do you have time for prayer? Sometimes you know, people cannot sit and pray for a long time. I would encourage all of you to spend time, quality time in prayer. Get up in the morning, pray. Pray to God the Father with all your heart. God will definitely answer your prayers and it will be a key to open the doors of heaven. Key number three, praise to God. Now sometimes when people who are having a lot of problems, when they go to God, they ask this for this and that. They give all the petitions to God. The word of God says, even before we pray, he knows all that we need. He's our heavenly father. He knows what we need. He can easily give us what is needed for us, provided we are his children. We live in communication with him, communion with him. But what happens is many people do not know how to praise God. St. Paul says, rejoice evermore. If you look at 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, 16 to 19, he says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And quench not the spirit of God. When a person comes to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is given to him or her. Once the Holy Spirit comes in, we must be able to link ourselves with the Holy Spirit and pray to God the Father in Jesus' name and also have an attitude of praise in our hearts. Praising without ceasing doesn't mean you have to be always telling praise the Lord, praise the Lord. No, that doesn't mean. What it means is we we'll have to open our heart and thank the Lord for all that he has done and also praise him for what he is. Praise, I tell you, is something different from prayer. When we are in this world, we pray to God. We pray to God the Father. But when we die and go into heaven, we never will ask anything from God. There's no need to pray for anything in heaven. Everything is there. But what continues to be in heaven is praise. This is what we should understand. So when we are in this world, we have to praise God for all that is done for us, all that he is. Then our hearts are lifted up. There was a great man of God whose name was Roland Buck. He was in the U.S. One day as he was about to settle down and sleep, suddenly he felt somebody was standing in his room. Later he realized it was Angel Gabriel. And Angel Gabriel spoke to him a lot of things. And later often other angels also used to visit them. One day Angel Gabriel and another angel called Creoni and others came there. And Angel Gabriel, uh, Roland Buck says that he was a seven foot a tall person. And as they were gathering together, Angel Gabriel said, let us worship the Lord. All of them closed their eyes and they began to worship God. And in the heart of Roland Buck, there came a, a, a heart of praise. He was opening his heart and praising God. He was speaking in tongues, which he had never done before. And as they were praising God, suddenly he felt like looking down. When he looked down, he found that angel Gabriel's feet were six inches above the ground. And Creoni, another angel, his feet were one foot above the ground. When he looked at his feet, he was two feet or two and a feet above the ground. All their heads were together. And then as they were concluding their worship time, they just settled on the ground. This was a specific subjective experience that Roland Buck had had. Now, what we can understand from this experience is, the angel Gabriel told Roland Buck, when we praise God, we're elevated to the level of heaven. Heaven comes into our heart. Many are not able to have faith in their hearts. They are not able to have praise in their hearts. They are not able to believe that God will take care of them. So they're full of sorrow, they're dejected, negativism is there, and they begin to grumble. God can never be happy about a grumbling heart. Praise opens the door of heaven. We allow to be full of praise and thanksgiving to God. Open him out and thank God and praise him for what he has done and what he is. So when we do that, we will be opening the door of kingdom of heaven. 
Moving on, I want to talk to you something about the key number four, the prayer filled tears. We all have tears, various types of tears, tears of anger, tears of frustration, tears of uh, sorrow. Now, we cannot hear a child that is born in a hospital. When the child is born, nobody would say, ah, the child was laughing. Human existence is full of tears. Various types of tears are there and maybe some people may have crocodile tears. But what I would like to tell you is tears with prayer are effective. Now to tell something about the efficacy of prayerful tears and tearful prayers, I want to speak about Mary, Martha and Lazarus. Three young people, parents were not there, Lazarus was sick and Jesus did not come there though they sent word that he whom he loves is sick. Jesus did not come and he died and after four days Jesus came. Martha went and saw Jesus and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, your brother shall rise again. And she did not understand the implication of that for that day. She said, yes, I know my brother will rise up again later. She came to her sister and said, Master has come, he is calling for you. Mary came there. She fell at the feet of Jesus, spoke the same words in prayer, but with tears. She said, oh Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus wept. Jesus loves us so much. When we pray with tears, not hypocritical tears, tears from a broken heart, tears that are sincere, tears coupled with prayer, when we have that, it is more efficacious. When Martha went to Jesus, she was not able to bring Jesus to the problem. She couldn't. Jesus stood there, she came alone and called Mary to go and meet Jesus. But when Mary went and prayed the same prayer with a broken heart and tears, Jesus wept. He began to groan in his spirit and said, why have you laid him? Jesus was able to come to the problem. So our tears with prayers are more efficacious. Our tears can open the kingdom of heaven open the door of heaven. The word of God says that God gathers all our tears, not all tears of frustration, tears of anger, tears of sorrow, but tears with prayers. He gathers every prayer, every drop he gathers. He knows why we are suffering. This is very important in our life. I heard of a pastor who was ministering God's word. He was used of God mightily and he was a man with tears. Not crying like a crybaby, but burden for souls, burden for the kingdom of God. He was an elderly person. He died and uh, he was buried. Another young man came and took charge of the church and he was a sincere person who was preaching God's word, but not much of development was there. So he called the sexton and said, what was the secret of your previous pastor? So the sexton took this young man and took him to the vestry and he said, you sit at, at the table. He opened the Bible and said, let your tears flow. Weep when you read God's word. Then he took him to the pulpit and said, when you preach God's word, let your tears flow. Tears without prayers. Prayers without tears are less effective. When we pray with all your heart, tears that are filled with prayer are more effective. I encourage all of you to understand that you must have a broken and a contact spirit. You know, when you go to God with pride or selfishness in you, you cannot have tears in your prayers and prayers in your tears. So what is needed is prayerful tears and tearful prayers. They will open the door of the kingdom of heaven. Now, key number five, the word of faith. The word of God is very important. Let us understand the importance of God's word. Hebrews 4 chapter 12 to 13 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. When we read God's word, when the word of God is read, when we meditate upon God's word, what happens is the spirit of God can help us to understand whether our thoughts are from God or from the word of God or from the demons. It's a discerner of intents and thoughts of men. The word of God is important. Hebrew 11.3 says, Through faith we understand that the, the worlds were framed by the word of God so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You know, NASA scientists have made a, a lot of research. They say our whole universe is 20 billion light years across. Very big universe. And it has its own dynamics. It is, it is organized. And they say that whole universe, the observable universe is only 1% of the reality. And there are 99% of invisible forces that control the whole world. 
This is what the word of God says. Things that appear are not from things that we are able to see. Things that appear are from invisible forces. God is beyond the universe. And God is imminent. God is also beyond. So God's word created the whole universe. Hebrew 1.3 says, Jesus being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right under the majesty on high. Jesus is the word. After he won victory over the death and Satan, he ascended into heaven. He is sitting on the right under the Father. Always ready to intercede for us to God the Father. So the word of God must be understood properly and we must be able to apply the word of God to our own heart. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you in your richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. See, the point is, we must have the word of God living in our soul, not stored up. I heard of a scholar who could memorize Hebrew Bible from top to bottom. Yes, memorized, but he was an atheist. So knowing the word of God in the brain will not help. What is needed is let the word of God that is alive dwell in our hearts. For the word of God to dwell in our hearts, we must be able to live the word of God. When we hear God's word, open our heart. Obey God's word. When we are not able to obey God's word, ask God, Lord, I am not able to obey your word. Give me grace to obey your word. The Holy Spirit who is in us can definitely give victory. So when we know the word of God, we can pronounce God's word as God gives us and the door will open. You know, sometimes what happens is, especially the people who are preaching wrong doctrine, they say, my word is big. I can command this. No. It is God who gives us a word. And when the revelation of God comes in, then we pronounce, then what God intended to happen will happen. So the word of God lived and pronounced opens the door of God's blessings and power. Isaiah 45, 11 says, Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, Ask of me things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Come on me. Not that we come on God. At the same time, when God, who knows about our future, who knows about the future of your own children and His activities, when we pray to God and say, Lord, what do I do? This problem is there in my family. My son is having this problem. My daughter is having this problem. What should I do? When we pray to God, He gives us a word. And when we pronounce the word in faith, the doors are open. I know about a man who was having a son and the son was having a lot of problems. He was about to die. His son was about to die. One day this man was praying. He was walking and praying. And suddenly he felt lifted up in his spirit. And he just began to tell, my son, in Jesus' name I say, rise up. So your son who was dying rose up. Pronouncement of God's word is important. Not we pronounce our word. Our words are, are of no use. God's word is eternal. God's word is spirit and power. When we pronounce God's word, there will be victory in our lives. These keys are for you. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be what has already been bound in heaven. And sometimes people misuse this word and say, I can control heaven. No, that is demonic. That's not possible. Not I control heaven. They misunderstand this particular word. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What all you open, what all you loosen are already loosed in heaven. We are to live in, um, in communication with God. What he says we should do, we must do. Then the miracles happen. Miracles also can be performed by demons. We must be careful not to be deceived. Many people, they perform a miracle and since it is supernatural, they believe that they are right. No. We must be able to understand the word of God, live within the framework of God's word. So Jesus gives us the keys. He has given to us five keys. I spoke to about five keys. Other men of God can speak about more keys that can open the window of heaven. All these keys, five keys are original. All these five keys are original. No duplicates, no duplicates, no hypocrisy there. Everything is true. What we bind on earth by the power of God as the spirit of God guides us, it will be bound in heaven. What we lose and in Jesus' name when we pray, the demons run away. Demons run away. And then we can see God working in us. What are we doing? There are five keys to open one door. We have du duplicate keys to open one door. Now here we have five keys that can open one door. Door of heaven. If we miss one key, we can use the other key. And all keys are original. No duplicate keys can be there. It's imperative that we reach out to God and ask for these blessings. 
And let us use these five keys with the grace of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Then there will be complete victory. There was a girl who went to a, another city to work as a teacher. The first day when she was in her, in her school, she did not know the passing of time and the other, others have left. So she was working in the lab and she came out. Her car was outside the gate and uh, she found the whole campus was empty. And she just threw her bag over the gate and went through the gate, uh, went through under the gate. And she was running towards her car. She found a few thugs trying to um, molest her, trying to chase her. She ran and tried to open the door. But what had happened was when she throwing the uh, uh, her bag over the fence, the key, bunch of key fell down. She did not know. So she ran near her car, put her hand in the bag, and then took a key. She did not know what key it was. She opened the car. She began to close the door. She just sped off. When she spoke to her daddy that night, she said, Daddy, I don't know what happened. All my keys were lost. But I found this one key. You know what the daddy told her? Just in case you might need a key, I prepared a spare key. Look at the heart of God the Father. I presented before you five keys. Are we willing to use the keys of the kingdom of heaven? God has given to us this keys. Key number one, name of Jesus. And key number two, prayer of faith. Key number three, the praise to God. And also the prayerful tears and the word of God. May the Lord bless you these words. Mm -hmm.